Welcome to our uh, lectures on fax devices. We have already discussed uh, UPFC. Now we shall continue with a new topic. So, uh, in last discussions, it has been stated that the unified power flow controller, that is UPFC, is capable of independently controlling the both real and reactive flow of the line. It is possible to control independently flow of power, but that for this reason we require to both shunt and series compensation together, but there is a limitation of only series compensation, mostly in case of the impedance uh, injection. The capability of the UPFC is facilitated by its power circuit which is basically AC to AC power conversion. So, it takes power may be through the shunt rule and inject power to the series root in case of the sack condition and vice versa in case of the may be the soil condition implemented by two back to back converter which we have seen in our discussing when we discuss the UPQC with the common desealing. The output of the one converter is coupled in series while the output of the other shunt is connected with the transmission line. The UPFC concept provides powerful tool to cost effective utilizations of the individual transmission line by facilitating independent control both real and the reactive power flow and thus maximum uh, thus it actually optimizes basically the real power transfer and the minimizes the losses. So, it is we optimizing the all the operating criteria. Now, we shall discuss now the interline power flow controller and we see the limitation of the sh normal shunt compensations uh, and series compensation mostly series compensations because power flow can be handled act by the series compensation and we will find the limitations of it. Then from that limitations we try to derive the necessity of the interline power flow controller. It is operated for the compensating number of transmission lines at a given substation maybe the three phase three wire system or three phase four wire system. Conventionally the series compensation is employed to increase the transmittable real power over a given a balance loading of a normally encountered multiple line system. So, we know that actually we have straight series compensation in detail ultimately V is given by uh, ultimately power is given by V1, V2 by X where X will be XQ into sin delta. So, XQ is a injecting impedance in this mode mostly we actually increase the power flow or get X enhancements can be done. However, there is a uh, there is a problem in it independent uh, power flow of P and Q is implemented by the series reactive compensator are unable to con uh, control the reactive power flow where if you can increase the real power flow, but it cannot actually control the reactive power flow uh, in the line and thus the thus it cannot really properly balance the loading of the line. So, this is the limitation of the actual impedance mode series compensation. Moreover, what happen when you are reduce when actually you are injecting the value of XQ mostly you actually subtract the value from the XL then value of the X by R ratio get reduced. So, this problem becomes particularly evident in those cases where the ratio of the reactive and the resistive impedance is quite low due to the injection of the XQ. Series reactive compensations reduces only the effective reactive impedance X. So, what happen thus significantly decreases the effective X by R ratio and thereby increases the 
reactive power flow and the losses in the line. Essentially current get increased, so I square losses we definitely is going to increase here. So, but we will then actually now we should discuss about the IPFC. So, you see that what is the advantage of it scheme together with the independently control of the here it is possible to have a independent control of the flow of the real power and the reactive power that is what we can state that that together with independently controllable reactive series compensations of individual lines provides a capability to directly transfer the real power between two compensated lines. So, this is the advantage of the IPFC. So, what we can state? The what is is actually its capability? IPFC makes equalized both real and the reactive power flow between the line and reduces the burden of the overloaded line for real power transfer. It is a typical case in railways where maybe the one line is heavily loaded because of the there has a this rex is running in a particular line and other lines are not so much overloaded. So, IPFC finds huge application in this kind of system. Compensate against the resistive line voltage drop and corresponding to the reactive power demand. So, it is it does not change 6 by R ratio, so it can does this compensation also. Increases effectiveness of the overall transmission system of the dynamic disturbance because if there is a actually if there is a sag in a particular line then it can act very fast compared to the series of shunt compensation. Thus what we can say that IPFC can potentially provide a highly effective schemes for the power transmission management of the multi line substation. Ultimately if there is a sag in one line as well in another line, so it can transfer power from the one transmission line to the other transmission line. So, in general form of the intermittent power flow controller employs is the same number of DC to AC converters each providing series compensation of different lines. The concept of IPAC, IPFC the composite converter are linked together by their terminal and the DC links are common we will come to this actually the picture in next slides. In the scheme in addition to providing the series reactive compensation any converter can be controlled to supply real power to the common DC link from its own transmission line. Thus an overall surplus of power can be made available from under the utilized lines which can be used other lines over the real power compensation. So, these are actually the basic operating principle of the IPFC. Now, this is a line. So, this is converter 1 and all generally have a common DC link and this is connected via transformer because of the rating because it is connected in the high voltage line. So, power electronics device cannot directly sustain that rating for this is we require to have a step down transformer and thus you have a converter 1 that will be injecting the power or flow, flow of power in line 1 that is HB1 same way HB2 and HB3. So, there is, there is an exchange of power and sometime it may be actually have a 6 lines because there might be a parallel line accordingly it can be actually made to operate in this fashion there can be a multiple high voltage transmission line. So, let us continue with the basic operating principle. In this above way as discussed in previous slide some converters converter compensating overload lines on the other uh, uh, with the heavy burden of the reactive power flow. And what happened then it can be equipped with the full two dimensional reactive and the real power flow control capability that is what I was discussing in case of the railway that burden in a particular line is heavy. If the current is heavy definitely you know actually with the current reactive as well as real both the parameter becomes heavy. Similar to the 
similar it can be offered by the UPFC. So, one of the advantage is that it is a component counts. So, it can only actually have a Intel line power quality. So, it does not have a series uh, shunt path to compensate it. <coughs> Sorry. The arrangement mandates the rigorous maintenance of the overall power balance at the common DC terminal by appropriate control action. Here you require to control the DC link voltage quite effective means. Let us consider an elementary IPFC scheme consisting of two back to back DC to AC converters each compensating a transmission line in series voltage injections. Two synchronous voltage let us uh, with the phaser we will discuss in next slide with VP that is that is that is in having a voltage of V1 PQ and similarly the second one will have a P2 PQ in series with the transmission lines 1 and 2 and it has been connected back to back with AC to AC converters. So, let us take us this pictures. So, this is a basic two converter intermittent powerful line conditioner scheme. So, this is basically your VP1. So, actually it will inject the it will inject the voltage same way the series compensation of PQ and effectively this voltage become V1 effective and thus you can send power. And one of the major benefit is that it can exchange power P1, P2 between this line to compensate these lines. If one line is heavily loaded, so it can take some of the power transfer to the second line and thus overall power handling capability of the line get increased because this line will not touch the thermal and the insulation stable limits. The common DC link voltage is represented by a bidirectional link of real power exchange between the two voltage sources. This is the case. The transmission line L1 represented by the reactance this one uh, reactance X1 and has the sending end bus voltage bus voltage phasor Vs1 and receiving end bus voltage phasor V1R the sending end phasor line for same it will be for the just the nomenclature will be changed with the suffix 2. So, you have a V s 2, you have V 2 P q, you have x 2, similarly the voltage drop across the inductor will be V x 2 and the receiving end is V r 2. So, this is the case. Now, for clarity let us uh, let us state all those uh, condition in advance. All the sending end and the receiving end voltage assumed to be constant with the fixed amplitude. That means, V s 1, V r 1, V s 2, V r 2 all are at 1 per unit at its base values with the fixed angle resulting the identical transmission angles let us say delta equal to delta 1 equal to delta 2 equal to let us say 35 to 30 degree or 45 degree for the two machine model. The two lying independence impedances of the ratio of the two compensating voltage sources are also assumed to be identical. That when V 1 P Q max that is maximum amount of the compensation that be that should be equal to V 2 P Q max and that should be equal to X 1 that should be equal to X 2. These are all identical with 0.5 per unit base value. The two lines are assumed to be independent and not any phase relation between each other. We should assume that they are actually independent lines. It is not that if it is A and another line is B. So, there is a 120 degree phase shifted something like that. To establish the transmission line relationship between the two systems, system 1 is selected with a prime system which is a controllable by both 
real and the reactive power line as simulated or as designed. So, let us discuss about the actually the first line of IPFC. So, this is the one line diagram of IPFC with single A and this is the phasor of the IPFC. So, you can see that actually before compensation this was the V s 1, this magnitude was V s 1 and effectively that angle was delta 1. Now, you have injected the voltage V 1 P q, please see that it is not, not need not be a quadrature, need not be a phase, it is an angle desire to optimize the rating. So, ultimately this is the angle and ultimately this is this is basically the amount of the rho compensation rho 1. So, effectively this voltage we can V s a 1 and effectively this voltage drop across this impedance become V x 1 and thus current is basically I 1 that remains unchanged please note that and effectively the delta also changes. So, we can see that value of V 1 increases effective it becomes V 1 uh, V 1 effective and also the delta 1 effective. So, from this discussion let us see that what happened here. Phasor diagram of the system 1 defining the relationship between V s 1, V r 1, V 1 x and inserted voltage V 1 p q with the magnitude that is uh, that is a v, p, v q 1 have a magnitude of greater than 0 and less than P p 1 q max and the angle that is the maximum angle of compensation that is v rho 1 p q that is that is 0 to maximum 360 degree it can have all the angle of injection. The relation of the phasor p q with angle rho 1 p q varies both magnitude and the angle of the phasor v 1 x in a cyclic manner. So, it can rotate inside the sphere of or the circle of influence. Thus, what happened? The transmitted power P 1 R and the react and the transmitted reactive power Q 1 R also varied with the actually rho 1 P Q in the sinusoidal manner. So, as this angle changes since delta changes and thus the power flow both both power reactive as well as real get changed. Why? Because actually V 1 V 2 x by sin delta effective and it is V 1 V 2 x 1 minus cos delta where it is means transferred by delta effective. So, it will be varying sinusoidally. So, the variation of the P 1 and Q 1 with rotation of the V 1 Q can be best illustrated in sending in uh, power that is P 1 R and P Q R as shown in the plane together that corresponds to the phasor diagram. See that this is the V s 1 and this is actually V r 1 and this is this circle is basic essentially is a sphere of influence and the compensating voltage line are these dotted cords and the reactive power compensation lines are basically the bolt lines. So, let us take this figure here and assume that it is operating some value of the angle. So, essentially you have the plot of P in x axis, P 1 R in x axis and Q R in a imaginary axis and ultimately you are operating here this is your sphere of influence this hole is a sphere of influence. And ultimately these dotted cords are essentially your other 
PQ line, you can actually go from, from point here, you can go to this point, you can go to this point, you can go to this point and this represents you know, if this is that this diameter represents actually if it is above the diameter, then essentially then IPFC is supplying power to the second source, second line, second UPFC, IPFC. And if it is operating below this diameter, then actually it is essentially absorbing power from the another IPFC. So, this is the principal operation of the IPFC. So, reactive power compensations in this line is 0 for this compensation. And here we have assumed that delta to be 30 degree. So, for this reason we have this mode of operation. Now, so from this discussions we can conclude that compensations of the prime system 1 described by the previous slide. So, that uh, is identical to that characterization operation of the UPFC that we have discussed in the when we were discussing UPFC. In case of the UPFC, the real power exchange through the series voltage insertion is supplied via shunt connected converter from the sending end bus. So, whatever extra power is required to be supplied or managed, this is done by the shunt compensation. But here, there will be a another IPFC to do that. In case of the IPFC, in case of the simple IPFC considered here, the real power is obtained from the other line by the series connected compensating converter of the line. So, that will be fed to the another converter, another series converter. So, there is no concept of the shunt compensation. You have seen that actual value of the current remain I1 only before and after compensation. In order to establish the possible compensation range of line 2 under constant imposed by the unrestricted compensation of the line 1, it helps to decompose the overall compensating power provided for the line 1 into reactive P1 QR and Q1 QR. So, we can split it into these two component and individually they can be controlled. The voltage injection of the phasor V1 PQ, it decomposed into the two components. One definitely V1 Q that is a reactive component of it, the quadratures and other V1 P in phase with the line current. The product of this with the line current defined Q1 PQ similarly with the in phase component with I give you P1 PQ. The component Q1 PQ is generated internally by the converter because it can uh, because it can generate the reactive power and evidently provides a series reactive compensation for line 1. But real power this component whether it will be absorbed or supplied. So, it has to be fed or donated by the second converter. The component P1 PQ provides a real power compensation of line 1, but this power must be supplied for, for the converter 1 by converter 2 of the line. So, second one should actually compensate the real power requirement of the first one and vice versa. So, the operate uh, the circular operating region that is a circle of in, uh, interference region of the injected voltage of the phasor act and the magnitude V P 1 V 1 P Q is controlled over the attainable angle rho. So, that its end stays on the straight line trajectory that means you have to operate in this line. So, this line you know this line is actually there is no compensation for real power. So, you are injecting no real power 
thus it did not have to exchange any power from the another converter. But if you are operating above it, so you have to supply the real power, if you operate below it, you have to supply the real power to the another IPFC and essentially these dotted lines are the voltage compensations. So, you can take it to this line anywhere in between. So, you do not have any compensation, you are essentially changing the delta. The parallel to the line connected, the ends of the sending and the receiving end phases, the reactive voltage compensation line. Then the component of V1 PQ in phase with the prevailing line current will result in constant real power demand and that the converter must supply or absorb independently the off angle rho 1. So, this is the angle rho 1. So, this is way it should be operated. So, this means that within the operating region V1 PQ, the reactive compensation is variable along a voltage compensation line independent of the real power compensation. The real power demand is by definition 0 when trajectory of V1 PQ coincide with the reactive voltage compensation line. So, we, when you are actually VP1 essentially is 0, then your real power compensation is 0. And increasing the amount of the real power is to be supplied to the system 1 as compensation line shifted higher and higher above the reactive voltage compensation line, the upper half of the control region. So, this is the case. So, it will shift to the upper half of the control region. Conversely, the increasing real power to be absorbed by the system 1 as the compensation line shifted lower and lower. Uh, lower and the lower below the reactive voltage line, reactive voltage compensation line, the lower half of the compensation region more and both power will be absorbed. So, thus voltage compensation line prescribing the trajectory for the phaser P 1 Q for the constant real power demand in the phaser diagram of system 1. Okay. So, this is the power supplied above it, above the diameter and this is the power absorbed and this is the PQ line, these are the constant PQ line with if it operates in this PQ line, you know, this is the constant PQ line. Define a linear relationship between the receiving end reactive and the real power of Q 1 R and P 1 R respectively within a circular locus compensating the boundary of the control region of Q 1 R and P 1 R plane. Thus, with P 1 2 equal to 0, what happened then it only compensate the reactive power. The reactive power compensation control within the line which crosses the center of the boundary so, this is the line of the circle defines P 1 Q 1 R versus P 1 R relationship purely reactive variable compensation. So, this is the line corresponds to purely reactive variable compensation where no real power exchange between two IPFC this is the line essential this become the diameter of the circle of influence. So, from these discussions we can say that an infinite number of parallel lines parallel P uh, parallel Q 1 R versus P 1 R lines of decreasing lengths corresponding to the voltage compensation line as you go up for the phasor diagram can be established. So, what happen you know this length decreases as you go up the compensation increases. Similarly, also you decreases. 
number of such line corresponds to the voltage compensation lines of the related vector diagram as shown in the previous two slides are shown the same manner in the in the Q1 uh, R versus P1 R control region of Q1 R and P1 R plane as shown in the previous figure. It indicates that the reactive power flow increases or decreases in proportional to the real power supplied or absorbed from the line by the series compensation. Thank you for your kind attention. We shall continue with the IPFC also in the next class.